first contact with Joshua Pope. All right. Hello, Owings. Welcome to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here tonight. It is the 29th of June 2017. We are one day away from completing yet another month in the year 2017. Things are moving along. What do you think? Has this year moved pretty quick? It certainly seemed like it has. A lot of stuff, done. A lot of stuff going on these days. Yesterday, I hope you got a chance, and if you haven't already, I hope you get a chance to go back and listen to yesterday's show, because yesterday's show was a complete hour of nothing but but uh, the history of media manipulation, the history of media manipulation. It's very, very important that you check that out. Um, let me just jump over here, show you. We've got the first contact radio site. If you go there, you could find out all of the links from yesterday's story. I mean, I went over it in a lot of detail. I went over this whole thing in a tremendous amount of detail. So what I covered was going all the way back to the Council on Foreign Relations and how they came into play. And from the Council on Foreign Relations, we had media control occurring. And then we had uh, the Operation Mockingbird in the 40s, which then took it to another level because we started having CIA involvement in, involved. And then throughout the years, we've had additional bills and executive orders put in place where the media then could use propaganda on the American people and on and on and on. This has been going on for a long, long time. So... For anybody to think that this is something new, well, that's the mistake. And the reason people are thinking that is because they're hearing Donald Trump talk about this. And for many, it's the first time. We haven't had other presidents talk about the problems that we're having with the media like Donald Trump is. Okay, President Trump is going full tilt at, at addressing a problem that is a major problem, media manipulation. But because there is so much hatred out there for Donald Trump as the president of the United States, they are overlooking the fact, people overlook the fact that the news problem has been going on. So they're actually defending the ones who have been manipulating the news for a long time. And just to be certain, just so you know, I do not subscribe to any of the mainstream networks as a viable source to go to get your news on a regular basis. Sure, there's the occasional person who will be at the network that will expose some truths, but for the most part, you're not getting that, okay? You're not getting the truths being exposed because if that was the case, you'd be hearing a lot more of what you're hearing in alternative media, which you're not. So, you know, right now, if we look at Fox News, for example, because President Trump is in office, we do have those who are pro-Trump that are giving you valid news, real information about what's going on. Because this is, despite what people think, a very transparent um, administration. Okay, We're getting the tweets directly from President Trump. We're not going secondhand to anybody else. It's a really big, important step that is taking place here. So... So that is really important that we recognize the media's involvement and we understand. So because we have a problem with the media, we can't trust that they are going to be providing the American people with the information that they're going to need to make proper decisions. That's a big problem. Okay. Next, we have situations with media who are telling outright lies that I would think could be dangerous to the national security of our country because how would you feel if you're in Russia and you keep hearing that America keeps blaming you for doing something that you didn't do? Do you think eventually you might get upset with that? So it's quite possible that our media could drag us into a situation. The media is trying to drag people into a racial war a civil war with each other the way they keep pushing things 
Listen to the, the networks, how racist they are. You have these individuals on the show who are most the most racist, vile people I've ever seen that are out there spouting their lies and their poisonous attitudes out to American people as if this is normal. I think it's just m- the most ludicrous thing. And today we're all hearing, of course, about the uh, big Twitter uproar because Donald Trump tweeted something out and they didn't like it. Mika didn't like it. Oh, no. The fake crocodile tears from the media. You know, the media is filled with a whole bunch of jackasses that are out there so sanctimonious and think they have the moral high ground. They don't have the moral high ground. These are people who are, are protecting rapists, murderers, pedophiles. They themselves might be rapists, murderers, and pedophiles, but we certainly know they're protecting them. And these are the same scumbags that are going on demeaning those who are trying to stop all of the corruption. Have you heard the media yet talk about the pedophiles that have been arrested since Trump took office? No, you don't hear them talk about that because there are too many of them in the networks that are involved with such despicable behavior. And so they're not going to talk about such things, despite the fact that they're happening. What I find sad is I bring these issues up with people. I tell a lot of people about the amount of pedophiles that have been arrested and the amount of children that have been rescued. And what I see when I tell people, especially if they are not a Trump supporter, is the look of I don't care on their face over and over and over again. It's baffling that people don't care about that. And the reason they don't is because they have such blind hatred for President Trump. Well, to all of those people with that blind hatred, shame on you. Shame on you for being so stupid that you can't look past your own hatred. At the same time, I feel sorry for you that you can't look past your own hatred because I know that it's going to eat you up and tear you apart inside, and you're not going to have anyone to blame for yourself. It's a ridiculous situation that we're in. And if we look at the overall context, what we have is a situation where people don't know how to tell the difference between a truth and a lie. So they're protecting the liars we're protecting the liars. The last couple of days, we've had Project Veritas has been releasing videos confirming the corruption, confirming the lying that is taking place at CNN. CNN, of course, is not playing any of those. They are not letting people know that this information is out there, and the way that they're handling it is to double down and to really – continue to blame the people who they've been shown out to be lying about all for ratings those people who do that i think those people should spend some time in a jail i think they should spend some time in a place where they can think about what they did not being able to have access to go out and share news with people now that may sound like censorship and i guess to some degree it is The best way is for people just to turn off from those sources. But what's going to happen eventually is we all know a very simple story from the time we were little kids to the time we've grown up. It's about the boy who cried wolf. And when the boy cried wolf, first time and the second time and the third time, and each of the time it was not real, eventually people stopped listening to the boy when he was crying that there was a real wolf. That's what the media is doing. They've set themselves up. They've lied and lied and lied to the fact that we're no longer going to believe them. And CNN is having a real problem with that. MSNBC is not too far behind because they are lying just as much. But right now they're kind of, you know, they're playing their game. But they're part of the whole lying mess. And then Fox, okay, I'm going to give props to Hannity and to Tucker. And to there are some on the five, Jesse and Greg seem to be pro-Trump and, and moving forward with truth, you know, Kimberly. But there's still a lot of no Trumpers that are out there. And then, of course, you got the Republicans. And every time you hear somebody complaining about Trump Republican Party, who is it? The same cast of characters, Paul Ryan. We got the what's his name from down there in Arizona, John McCain, Songbird McCain. And then, of course, you have Lindsey Graham. 
And what do the three of those have in common? Well, it would be a guy named George Soros. Yes, that's right. They all are traitors, and they take money from George Soros, a traitor. That's just par for the course, and that is why the swamp needs to be drained. And that is what President Trump is working diligently to do. Now, I don't feel the need that I want to go on and explain what I believe Donald Trump is doing because I think I have an understanding, and I don't want to give away what I think is his secret. Let him do it, and if people don't understand, good. Then they're not going to catch up, and he's going to keep on winning, and I'm all for that. I'm all for that. You know how President Trump says he's not going to give his plan away from the enemy? Okay, so those who understand and really see what he's doing, there's no reason that we should uh, should not abide by that same ideology as well. Okay. No reason at all. Now, I want to get some, to some news here um, that is not necessarily being talked about on all of the channels on the mainstream networks. So we're going to get to that. If during the course of this evening you would like to call in, the number is 347-989-1234. We can talk about any of these particular issues at hand. In the meantime, let's uh, get to the story here. As you know... As you know, the travel ban is now in effect as of today. President Trump's scaled-back travel ban against the majority of Muslim countries went to effect at 8 p.m. Eastern Time Thursday, but is unlikely to result in the chaos at airports. His original travel ban caused in January when hundreds of travelers were caught in limbo. The January 27th order was struck down by federal courts prompting Trump to issue a new version that the Supreme Court this week said could be implemented on a limited basis. Those barred would be citizens of Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen with no close ties to the United States, no previously approved visa or refugee status or permanent residence, for example, green card. They will be banned for up to 90 days. 90 days, we're not talking forever. 90 days, that's three months. They will be banned for three months as the federal government reviews procedures to ensure that the terrorists do not enter the United States. Again, let me reiterate, they are doing this to make sure that terrorists do not infiltrate the United States. Travelers from the six majority Muslim countries who can prove a bona fide relationship to a U.S. person or entity, a standard the Supreme Court can enter. Okay, so question. Simple question, why is it important that our country protects us from terrorists? I know it's a silly, stupid question, but we need to ask this because there seems to be a lot of folks out there who would rather have the terrorists come into this country and cause problems. I don't know why, go figure, but we do have these kind of uh, brainiacs in America that really think that's a, that's a great idea. It's always a great idea until somebody starts uh, getting hurt by those who snuck in, right? Now, why would somebody consider that terrorists, because it said here that they will make sure that terrorists do not infiltrate the U.S. Why would they think that Muslims or terrorists might sneak into the U.S.? Why might they think that? Take a moment. Take a moment. Don't hurt yourself if, it, if you, know, you can't. Come to the procedure of thought. Let me help you out here. It's because for the last 1,400 years, 1,400 years, that is how terrorists have been sneaking into countries. So simply by the process of knowledge, knowing that they've been sneaking into countries for the last 1,400 years disguised as refugees, simply by applying that knowledge, They've decided that they are not going to advocate that kind of activity continue to happen. So they are going to go through procedures to make sure that the people coming in are not going to come in to hurt Americans. Okay? Now, we say Muslims. These aren't all the Muslim countries. There's a far bigger Muslim populations that are out there in other countries that aren't part of this ban. 
But the purpose of this particular list of countries is this happens to be where at the present time, those who are causing problems in other countries and in America are coming from those particular countries of interest. So for that particular reason, there are those who say, we're going to protect you. We're going to protect this country by protecting you from yourself. So when you have the gay population that is out there saying refugees come in, somebody needs to go smack them upside their dumbass heads and ideas and say, those Muslims want to kill you. You want to invite them in, but they want to kill you. So because you're not smart enough to think of that for yourself, we're going to have others in this country who are going to step forward and say, we'll protect you because obviously you can't protect yourself. Okay, so this is the problem, folks. Too many brain dead individuals. And why is it like that? Because the media has spent a great deal of time lying to the American people. Therefore, the American people do not have the proper information to let them know that they are in danger from the very people that they're trying to invite into this country. It's that simple. It's no more difficult than that. Okay? No more difficult than that. But we, you know, we have sometimes have to learn the hard way here in America. So hopefully we can uh, figure this out before we have to go too crazy. All right. So now let me continue on here. With this next story, this is a New York Times. Now, this is a very important piece here because I'm going to read this story to you. In the span of 72 hours, President Trump described the email hacking that roiled the 2016 campaign as a democratic hoax and as a clear aggression by Russia that his predecessor, President Barack Obama, failed to address. Other times, Mr. Trump has said that the hacking might be done by China. Or as he claimed during the first general election debate, the hacking could have been the work of a lone wolf weighing 400 pounds sitting on his bed at home. Then there was the time when Mr. Trump blamed some guy in his home in New Jersey. Or as Mr. Trump also suggested, there might not even have been a hacking at all. On Saturday, Mr. Trump tried again to focus his attention on Mr. Obama since the Obama administration was told way before the 2016 election that the Russians were meddling. Why no action, Mr. Trump wrote on Twitter. Focus on them, not T. He followed up with that. Obama administration officials said that they choked when it came to acting on Russian meddling of election. They didn't want to hurt Hillary. Government officials, members of Congress from both parties, and even some Trump supporters had hoped that with the campaign behind him, Mr. Trump would finally speak declaratively about the email hacking and recognize the threat Russian cyber attacks present. With asked why expect caveats or obfuscation, that hope has dissipated. The latest presidential tweets were proof to dismayed members of Mr. Trump's party that he still refuses to acknowledge a basic fact upon by four American intelligence agencies. Russia orchestrated the tax, and it did it to help him get elected. I think he would have been reward he would be rewarded politely, politically for being tough on Russia. Mike Duhame a Republican strategist and advisor to Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey. Mr. Duhane suggested it was time for Mr. Trump to help himself with a public declaration, definitively laying the blame on Russia. Most people grew up hearing the Russians are not our allies, Mr. Duhane said. He should be tough on them for what happened, what they attempted to do. It is not easy to explain why the president won't concede the Russia question, but aides and friends say the matter is most vulnerable. Mr. Trump often conflates himself to the institutions he serves. He qu- sees questions about Russia as an effort by Democrats and stragglers from the Never Trump movement to le- delegitimize his election victory. Then there is another reason. Okay, blah, 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 okay? Let me get to the important part down here. After they go through this whole, whole bunch of minutia, they have a correction down here. In small place where you're probably not even going to see it. 
A White House memo article on Monday about President Trump's deflections and denials about Russia referred incorrectly to a source of an intelligence assessment that said Russia orchestrated hacking attacks during last year's presidential election. The assessment was made by four intelligence agencies, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the National Security Agency. The assessment was not approved by all 17 organizations in the American intelligence community. Once again, that last statement is the assessment was not approved by all 17 organizations in the American intelligence community. So what does this mean? It means that the Washington Times, or excuse me, the New York Times has admitted that the 17 agency story was a bunch of BS. And yet it's being pushed out there. How many people do you know that are pushing this story as if they believe it to be true? How many people do you know, friends, family members? Then you get into the political arena, and how many of those out there are pushing this story? And yet it's not true. It's not true. But you've got idiots like Adam Schiff who's going to push this story for all it's worth because, well, he himself is obviously a not, not a very honest man. So he's going to continue to push and push and push. But that's what they do. Don't worry. The time is going to come where they will get their comeuppance. I truly believe that because their lies are going to come back to get them. And that will be the end of that. Now, says that the Trump election panel, okay, this was the panel put together by President Trump in order to investigate election fraud. Trump election panel asks all 50 states for voter roll data. Big news. The vice chairman of President Trump's Commission on Election Integrity sent a letter to all 50 states Wednesday requesting information on their voter rolls. Kansas Secretary of State Chris Corbach is seeking several pieces of information about voters, including their names, birthdays, the last four digits of their Social Security numbers, and their voting history dating back to 2006. The letter sent to the Secretary of State of all 50 states and obtained by the Hill directs states to turn over publicly available roller roller voter roll data including if publicly available under the laws of your state the full first last names of all registrants middle names or initials if available addresses dates of birth political party last four digits of social security number if available voter history from 2006 and onward Okay, says Corbach's letter asks states to respond to a list of questions about voting in their states, inquiring about laws, policies, and other issues, hinder your ability to ensure the integrity of elections you administer. He also asks for information about the convictions for election-related crimes since the November 2000 presidential election. The letter also stipulates the documents submitted to the commission will be made available to the public. States were given a deadline of July 14 to submit the info to the commission. Jason Kander, the head of the Democratic National Committee's Commission on Protecting American Democracy from the Trump administration, blacked the letter in a statement calling it very concerning. It's obviously very concerning when the federal government is attempting to get the name, address, date of birth, political party, and social number of every voter in the country. I certainly don't trust the Trump administration with that information, and people across the country should be outraged. Connecticut said it will comply with the commission's request in the spirit of transparency, but its Secretary of State, Denise Merrill, also issued a challenge to Corbach. In the spirit of transparency, we will request that the commission share any memos, meeting minutes, or additional information the state officials have not been told precisely what the commission is looking for, Merrill wrote. This lack of openness is more concerning considering that the vice chair of the commission, Chris Corbach, has a lengthy record of illegally disfranchising eligible voters in Kansas. Vice President Pence announced Wednesday 
that the Election Integrity Commission would meet for the first time in July. Pence, who is chairing the commission, told its members that the group's focus will be to protect and preserve the principle of one person, one vote. Trump signed an executive order in May establishing the commission, stating that the purpose of the group is to promote fair and honest federal elections. Nothing wrong with that. Corbach and Trump have both made unsubstantiated claims that large numbers of undocumented immigrants vote in U.S. elections. In January, Corbach told Fox Business that it will be impossible to ever know what the exact number is of non-citizens voting. I think it's probably over millions. If you take the whole country, I think it's probably in excess of a million. If you take the entire country, for sure, Corbat said at the time. Trump, meanwhile, said that he would have won the popular vote in November if it had not been for fraud. In addition to winning the Electoral College in a landslide, I won the popular vote. vote. If you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally, Trump wrote on Twitter in November. Okay, so that has been a big point of contention. When Donald Trump said that, oh, no, Donald Trump said people voted illegally. Guess what? They did. I'm going to direct you to a website, voterfraudisreal.com. You can go there. There's one video available for you there. It's a video that is addressing voter fraud. It is two gentlemen, one gentleman who is a Hispanic gentleman is sitting there having a conversation with another gentleman who is off and whose voice is cloaked. You listen to this interview. The interview is the gentleman is asking the man who is sitting there about how he's signing up people to vote. The man was describing how he was getting paid by the Obama and Hillary Clinton team to sign up illegals to vote. Okay, He was getting paid $25 in California because they – Already had a lot of people there. The voter fraud discovered a country. Who's going to jail in Virginia? Um, he's going to jail now. He was signing up people illegally. Okay, we know that there's been voter fraud. In Nevada, we know that there's been voter fraud that has been shown in California. We know across the country there are all sorts of cases. It's been estimated by voter integrity groups that have looked into this that there is to the tune of millions of illegals that have voted in this election. Not only illegals, but people who are dead. What's wrong with saying that you need to have an ID to vote? Oh, that's disenfranchising voters. Please break. Black people can't get IDs to go vote. That's disenfranchising them. Really? That's what some people actually think. But that's ridiculous because black people can get IDs just as much as white people or brown people or yellow people. Anybody in 2017 can go get an ID. And anybody that wants to go shop in 2017, like to buy liquor, and I know that there's people of all different colors that like to buy liquor. Well, you got to have an ID for that. And then, of course, if you say, well, what about the people on welfare? Guess what? In order to do that, you have to have some sort of identification to sign up for the process. So any the excuse is just a bogus excuse by the person who's teaching that they're making use. Because they're lying and cheating and stealing, and they want to continue to do that, but voter fraud throws a monkey wrench in their plan. Now, of course, California, being the backward state that it is, filled with all the crazy uh, lunatic liberals, and I know that's an oxymoron to put those phrases together, they've issued a statement today because, of course, California is not going to comply well, that's because California has the greatest amount of voter fraud. Secretary of State Alex Padilla responds to Presidential Election Commission request for personal data of California voters. The President's Commission has requested the personal data and voting history of every American voter, including Californians, 
As Secretary of State, it is my duty to ensure the integrity of our elections and to protect the voting rights and privacy of our state voters. Oh, really? Really, Mr. Alex Padilla? Is that why I got a form in the mail that had my voting information on it from some group out here, some liberal group? <laughs> I will provide not provide sensitive voter information to a commission that has already inaccurately passed judgment that millions of Californians voted illegally. But they did. California's participation would only serve to legitimize the false and already debunked claims of massive voter fraud made by the president, the vice president, Mr. Korbach. The president's commission is a waste of taxpayer money and distraction from the real threats to the integrity of our elections, documented by the Russian interference in our elections and aging voting systems. Okay, again... Here we have Secretary of State Alex Padilla just proving how uninformed he is because he's toting the party line. Okay, he's from a state where they cheat. Alex Padilla probably himself is a cheater as well, which is why he doesn't want to change it. Just another, another in a long line of corrupt politicians. The president's appointment of Korbach, who has a long history of sponsoring discriminatory anti-immigrant policies, including voter suppression and racial profiling laws, sends a clear and ominous message. His role as vice chair is proof that the ultimate goal of the commission is to enact policies that result in disenfranchisement of American citizens. No, it won't. I will continue to defend the right of all eligible voters to cast their ballots free from discrimination, intimidation, or unnecessary roadblocks. Well, there you go. There's Alex Padilla. Now, living in California, it's kind of an embarrassment to know that these sort of idiots live out here. But I'm surrounded by them. I'm surrounded by them out here. I'm telling you, they're brain dead. I know a lot of California is red, but I happen to live in one of the brain dead blue areas. But I proudly wear my Trump hat every single day. I get looks at from people from time to time. I'm telling you, I've never met such a group of brain dead people out here is the liberal minds that are out here and they're just vile horrendous behavior so here's another article that gets into the discussing of this probe that's going on in california and virginia and kentucky said they would refuse to comply well we'll see about that they're afraid what are they afraid of you know McAuliffe said there's no evidence of voter fraud in Virginia, except for the guy that was signing up people illegally. <laughs> These people. These people crack me up. They're just so complicit. Do you think when they grew up, they said they wanted to grow up to be a liar, to, to lie, cheat, and steal? It's, that's really bizarre. It's really bizarre. Now, as you're all hanging on with CNN, Project Veritas, James O'Keefe's, well, today he had another one. The first day we had the one producer from uh, CNN, and that was very important because of what he was saying, how the Russia thing was BS. Then yesterday was about Van Jones and his nothing burger. Again, Van Jones, the, the racist guy who, who said that the only reason Trump won was because of a white lash. I guess that means because of white people. So here you got a black guy who's making racial jokes and making racial comments, trying to dig into somebody. Wonder how his wife feels that that isn't he married to a white woman? Wonder how she feels when he's making such kind of racial slurs. What a what a crazy despicable guy. So today, the video came out from James O'Keefe was of him outside Jeff Zucker's place. And, of course, Zucker zips right by, doesn't want to say a word to him. Why? Because he's just a chicken. He's just, he's just a cuck, okay? He's just someone who is only interested in selling lies and selling BS in order to get ratings. But he's going to get his because his lies are going to come back to haunt him because – as I'm hearing that you know there's a, a sale of some sort that is in the works, and, and the questions being asked of him are in regards to this integrity of what's going on. So I put the link up for you so that you can go and 
Check out the video there. I'm not going to play it. You've seen it plenty of times throughout the course of this day. Okay? So there you go. And and here's one other story. I think this is an important one that um, people should be aware of. And what this guy is about. Zuckerberg, Open Borders Group, likes tax-funded lawyers for illegals. Okay? This guy doesn't love America. This guy's not interested in America. He wants to have a society that is an open society. This is a George Soros kind of guy. This is the kind of guy, if you read the 1984 book, this is the kind of guy that is into wanting to control people's thinking process. Okay? There he is. This guy is just a, in my opinion, a despicable fella. I have no respect for him and what he's done. I think he's a tiny little twerp who's out and says how people should be, but himself doesn't want to follow along with any of that. He's just he's just a fraud. But he's out there and he's collecting information and and then he's going to go out and make his hypocritical statements. So the best thing that people could do is not give them all their information. I know it's a source where people connect with each other, and I know there's a lot of great things that people can have because of those connections. But in order to make those connections, you have to trust the people that are involved with the gathering of the information that you're putting there. Mark Zuckerberg is not a person who is showing himself to be trustworthy. The more we know about him, the more we understand that this guy hates America, that this guy loves the enemies and loves those who want to tear America apart. Okay, it's a big ruse what's going on with this guy. People are buying into it, and they bought into it, and I'm sure they continue to will buy into it because that's just kind of how it is with people. So there you have it. There are some of the stories of today. I am going to jump away for a few moments, play a song for you, and I will be back. And we shall continue on. This song is called Wake Up. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions. But these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. People should not be afraid of the
Very interesting what's going on in our government these days, isn't it? I think it's just really interesting. It's a good time to uh, see what's going on. You know, I truly believe that Donald Trump is here to clean up Washington, D.C. I know that there are those who want to give him a bad rap, but those people have political agendas. I don't have a political agenda. As a matter of fact, I've been pretty much an independent person for the majority of my life. It wasn't really until the last election before this one when I really got heavily involved with with someone that I liked, and that was Ron Paul. I really liked what Ron Paul was all about. Went out to the uh, fest out there just before the Republican convention, was at the convention, was at D.C. at the convention there, Made a trip to Washington, D.C. during that whole time. Learned a lot. Got to see firsthand corruption um, that was going on out there. But when Donald Trump came along, I didn't jump on the Trump train because Donald Trump was a Republican. I can't even bring myself, when people ask me if I'm a Republican, to, to think about that because I'm not a Republican. I'm an American citizen who understands that Donald Trump is the anti New World Order. Guy, I understand that he is here to clean up a mess, and he is surrounded by all kind of swamp creatures that are trying to drag him down. So my reason for supporting Donald Trump was because of understanding what it was that he was doing and going to be doing. But those who are out there, so many of these young people just want to badmouth him. And just want to put him down. These people have no idea what they're talking about. If they spend any time studying the New World Order agenda, they would understand that they're following the wrong way. But these young kids, they're just young and dumb. And and nothing seems to be more ludicrous when you have these young, dumb college kids who have never spent a day of life outside of the bubble of a college campus, have never spent a day in real life trying to tell others what's going on in real life. I mean, that's the most ludicrous thing. But it's happening across these countries. Why? Because we have had indoctrinations going on for a long, long, long time. I brought this up before, and um, I'm going to bring it up again right now to show you, because this kind of is a big, big part of the problem right here. called 30-year Muslim plan to control America okay this was in 2014 at that point there were six years to go now it's 2017 that means there's three years to go 25 years ago to actually 27 now Muslim Brotherhood spiritual leader Yusuf al Qadwi traveled to America to unplack his pa- plan for a Muslim takeover that would begin one year later and take 30 years to complete. It concluded a key component and tactic known as Murana. Like Ebola virus, it is extremely effective at carrying out its deadly mission. Since discovering a shocking photo earlier this year that showed El Khorwadi at the Dar El Haraj Mak in Church Falls, Virginia, with then mosque chairman Basar Estwani, a third figure in the photo has been overlooked until now. Shobat.com has determined that the man sitting between El Khordawi and Estwani is Shakir Elsiad, the current Imam at Dal Ajhijer and former Secretary General of the Muslim American Society, a Muslim Brotherhood front group from 2000 to 2005. Dar El Hiraj was opened in 1991 and MAS was founded in 92, seven years before Al Quadra was banned from the U.S. in 1999. Al Asyad did not become an imam at Dal Al Hiraj 
until 2005, yet somehow was able to have a seat at the table with Al Qadawi inside Dar Al Hirad just years before becoming a leader with MAS. The history of those two who have been a mover and a shaker with U.S. politicians include Bill and Hillary Clinton as early as 95. Dates back to about the same time frame. Here's a most recent photo of Estwani and them in Honolulu. Okay, so goes on to say, as Schubert reported, Al, Al Qadawi was the primary scholar of an insidious Sunni Islamic tactic known as Marana. Westerners have rightly begun to understand the Kaya lying to protect the faith of Islam, but this is a Shiite term in practice. Marana is much more immediate threat to the U.S. In fact, any Muslim Brotherhood infiltrator of the U.S. government is very likely employing it right now. Though the photo of the three men inside Da al Hira is undated, it was likely taken circa 1997, nearly a decade after al Qadawi was introduced Marana to stealth Muslim Brotherhood operatives in the U.S. Thanks to Steve Emerson's 1994 PBS documentary, Jihad in America, we have seen a screenshot of what al Qadawi looked like the year before he brought perhaps the most deceptive Muslim tactic yet to American shores and inside our walls. Of course, what can be concluded is that al Qadawi's plan was in full swing as he spoke at Dar al Haraj. Marana has most certainly been introduced to al-Assad and Astwani in the case of al Qadi and al-Assad's Zamas, Muslim use for targeted specifically. It was al Qadi who introduced Marana to the American Muslim community in December 1989 at the annual conference of the Association of Muslim, Muslim Use Forums. The Muslim Brotherhood leader introduced this tactic along with a 30-year plan 1990 through 2020 for the conquest of Muslims in the United States that would include a tactic that would permit Islamic prohibitions. Marana was designed to catapult and advance Sharia by using Western means. If one thinks that Sharia with its harsh code is problematic enough, how about the elimination of the kinder, gentler laws? Marana is literally accomplished by permitting behavior normally so eschewed by Sharia that Westerners logically assume a more moderate version of Islam when such prohibitions are suddenly permitted. Westerners' eyes are in fact deceiving them. Marana is about going to great lengths to gain interest through a much deeper level of deception while simultaneously lowering the guard and gaining the support of the infidels. An archived page of the MS website from 2003, smack dab in the middle of El Siad's tenure there states the following. The call on the spirit of the movement reached the shores of North America with the arrival of the Muslim student and immigrants in the late 50s and early 60s. These early pioneers and Islamic movement followers established in 63 Muslim student associations of the U.S. and Canada as the rallying point for their endeavor to serve Islam and Muslims in the North America scene. Other services and outreach organizations soon followed, such as North American Islamic Trust, the Islamic Medical Association, the Arab Muslim Arab World Association, and the Muslim Youth of North America, to name a few. Okay. In March 2000, Estwani wrote a letter to President Clinton, which he handed to Clinton personally. This is backed up by Clinton's handwritten notes appearing in the letter. It includes the following. I was also honored in being given the opportunity to invite you personally to visit our Islamic Center and Mosque in Church Falls, Virginia, Dar al-Haraj Islamic Center, which is considered one of the most active and largest Islamic centers in the United States. I have been repeatedly honored by your invitations and warm receptions at the White House, especially at the breakfast prayers since September 1995. You and the First Lady have graciously hosted the Muslim community on several occasions, and we are eternally grateful for you, your, her, and your gracious hospitality and reception. We wish her and you the best always. It is little more than conceivable that the chairman of Dar Haraj would not only curry favor the office of the White House, but also seek protection of his mosque from a government that never likes to eat crow or hold its superiors accountable. With each photo taken of Istwani with prominent politicians, there is a treasure trove that includes Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Representative Dennis Kucinich, Speaker Dennis Hassert, Senator Warren, Representative Jim Moran, Representative Thomas Davis, Representative Cindy McKinney, 
Hillary Clinton and others. The more covered he'd get, not exposing Dow Haraj to complete sunlight and the effect of protecting the office of the President of the United States. As Showbat.com reported, Clinton's successor, George W. Bush, had tra- additional reasons to protect Clinton. How the case of Anwar al was handled is very instructive. Thanks to the documents obtained in a Freedom of Information Act request filed by Judicial Watch, it was revealed just how interested the FBI was in al in the days, weeks, and months after 9-11. In particular, they were interested in associations with the three hijackers. What has not been demonstrated is the FBI's interest in al superiors and colleagues at the mosque. So, as you can tell, can blah, 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 and I'm going to tell you, you know what? If that's what you think, then you're completely uninformed. And if that's the case, then you deserve every bit of problems that you would get from these jihadis. If that's the case, if you believe that this is a lie, but if you have two brain cells that you could rub together, then what I'm going to suggest to you is you think back over history and understand for the last 1,400 years, we've had radicals invading countries as refugees. They've done it. They continue to do it, and they're doing it again. They've been in America embedding themselves for the last 27 years. They've embedded themselves in our school systems teaching the young kids, which is why the kids think the way that they think. Now you may say, oh, Josh, you're harping on this again. You talked about this last time. That's right, I did. But there are still people out here in America so uninformed that they want to invite the very killers into their house. And then there'll be the same people who will cry and scream when somebody gets raped or killed. Well, you didn't know that would happen. Well, you should have listened to the people who told you. There's an invasion taking place here in America. I'm not turning a blind eye to it. You should not turn a blind eye to it. And if you do, like I said, then you're going to have to deal with the problems that come along with that. Now... Some of these things seem a bit dire when we hear about them. When, when, when I talk about this, it almost sounds people say you're, you're fear-mongering. Is it fear-mongering if I'm bringing to you the observation or the information of what's truly taking place? Would you rather that I tell you that the enemy is wanting to break in and, and cause problems in your home? Or would you rather I just ignore that and then after it happens you say, well, why didn't you tell me? You see, I don't want to see anyone that I know hurt. And I'm pretty certain that you don't want to see anybody that you know hurt. But there's a lot of uninformed people who are listening to the lies of the mainstream media, who are listening to the lies that are being told to them by politicians, and they're going into the world, and they're doing things that are going to get them hurt. We have to stop that. We cannot allow such activity to take place, okay? We can't keep doing things that are going to hurt us because if we do, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble, okay? We have to change our way of thinking. America first. It's not a bad agenda, okay? We have the 4th of July coming up in just a few short days from now. An opportunity for all of us as Americans to understand why we appreciate this country. What's going to happen on that day? Are we going to have uh, battles? Are we going to have people talking about how much they hate America, other Americans? Are we going to have that? Or are we going to be able to move forward without all of the problems? Are we going to be able to move forward and come into a different appreciation of what we have here? Because if we lose this, we might not get it back. And then those of you who are clamoring for all of these things to happen are going to wish that you hadn't wanted these things to come into your life. Because if that happens, you can't undo the murders, and you can't undo the rapes, and you can't undo the molestations and the attacks that might go on. So now is the time to stop that. 
Look what's going on in Germany. Look what's going on in France. Look what's going on in Sweden. Time to think, my friends, because your life is at stake. Your family's lives are at stake. Your friends' lives are at stake. If you want to sit and you want to believe Rachel Maddow when she tells you all this nonsense, then you go ahead and you believe her. But if bad things happen because you believed her, that's your fault. All I could say is this. Rachel Maddow lied to you for the whole time during the election, along with all the others at MSNBC and CNN and many at Fox. They lied to you over and over and over again. They were wrong, and yet they're still wrong. Why would you ever listen to them? Okay, that was an election they were wrong about. They lied to you about the polls. If they lie to you about this and somebody gets murdered, you can't take that back. That's a bad, bad lie. So what we have to do is get strong. We're now dealing with this time. We're dealing with a lot of emotions in the air around us. We've got a a sense of the justice we want to see imposed in the world, and we want to see truth and integrity expressed. But for some reason, this portion of society can't seem to understand why their lies are such a problem. Well, hopefully they'll figure out before it's too late. If not... We're just going to have to move forward in life without them because they're just going to drop to the wayside because people are going to stop listening to everything that they're about. So that's it for today. I did a good deal of ranting, but I gave you a great deal of information that you're not hearing out there. Please share this information, firstcontactradio.com. If you're at the YouTube page, subscribe to the page. I'm really putting a lot of effort in, folks, to make sure that I share this info with you, to share as much as I can. I'm just one person, one voice out of many, no more special than anybody else, but I just have this desire to want to see truths in the world so that people that I know and love can be protected, even if the people that are out there are uninformed right now, we still have to make sure that they're protected. Their stupidity can't be the reason on why they get hurt, especially if other people can do something about that to protect them. So there you have it. That's it. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. Share this this show. Pass the information around. Let's get on the same page. We've got America celebration coming up next week. Think about all that we have, all the good stuff. Tremendous amount of good stuff, my friends. That's it. I'll talk to you later. Have an awesome day. Peace. I am out of here.